Let's just start with this simple question. How close we were to this system breaking, something failing? How close were we, Thomas? We were frighteningly close on, on uh, January 28th when uh, we had 50 million registered shares. At the same time, we had uh, 70 million shares short and uh, 150, mil uh, 150 million shares short uh, via co short call options. So if the call options had uh, been exercised, the shorts would have had to deliver 270 million shares while only 50 million shares existed. So as the rules are today, the long broker has to, if he can't get the shares, he has to go into the market and buy the shares at whatever the price is. So that could have pushed the price uh, further up into the thousands. Uh, when that happens, obviously the shorts cannot pay up. Uh, so the brokers, uh, they default on the brokers, the brokers default on the clearing house, and the, the whole thing is a, is a huge mess that's uh, impossible to untangle. So there is a simple solution for this, the way I see it. Uh, number one, we would have to get the, the short positions published once a day because we currently have it only twice a month. And second, we would, uh, the SEC would have to require brokers to charge an additional 1% of margin uh, for every 1% uh, of short interest. And that would uh, then raise the margins progressively so high that people would stop shorting stocks. So margin requirements would have to increase as short interest increases. That seems to be the view from you, Thomas. I'm just wondering from your perspective, overseeing a broker, is there anything you can do to protect your clients before the SEC or the regulator has to tell you to do it? Of course we can. That's exactly what we did. We increased our margins. So, so we, why does we... the regulator need to make that decision on your behalf, Thomas? So I'm just speaking out loud with you, thinking out loud, trying to work through this process with you. Why do you need the regulator to make that step? Well, so first of all, I do not know the short interest daily, and it, it would be important for me to be able to know how much to increase the, the margins by. So the regulators could require that the short interest be reported daily. That's very simple. Uh, secondly, the regulators re tell us the minimum margin we must charge, and we are free to charge more, and that's exactly what we did. But uh, some brokers may not be able, may not know how to deal with this. Uh, that's why I think it would be good if the, if the SEC required all brokers to charge more on shorts. Thomas, because another issue that came up as well was the conflict of, issue, conflict of interest issue as well. And I know for you that you have a different model. You're not reliant on payment for order flow in the same way other brokers are. But Thomas, can you speak to that? The explosion of commission-free trading that we've seen over the last several years, and in some parts dependent on the payment for order flow, can we have one without the other? Can we have the explosion of interest in trading without payment for order can, flow? Can we have the explosion in commission-free trading, or at least the democratization of, of markets that we have seen over the last several years without the payment for order flow factor in all of this? But, but, but look, I mean, the, the commission between zero and, for example, we charge less than like $1.95 on the average trade. That, 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 that difference is almost negligible, right? So uh, I don't, the average trade is, is probably about, you know, forty fifty thousand dollars $50,000. So whether you pay zero or you pay two bucks, that's not much of a difference, right? So do you think the conflict of interest is not an issue? No, I don't think so. Thomas, what would you like to see asked today? And who would you like to see those questions aimed at? I would like, I, well, I basically would like to ask the SEC why they didn't act on, on, on uh, the morning of, of, of January 28th, because uh, I, I was so scared, I can't tell you how. How scared I was. Well, Thomas, what were you scared about? Just that, what does failure look like? You said we came close to breaking. What were you scared of? What did you think was going to happen? I was scared, scared of a domino bankruptcy. I mean, I, I, I tell you, the rules require the long brokers to go into the market and buy the shares at whatever price. 
So that drove the shares up to $480, and then suddenly, it, it, I, I guess, uh, they, they, it didn't go further, but it could have gone further. So if the shorts had known, I mean, if the longs had known that they have the right to ask for their shares, yeah. Uh, and 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 they really wanted a short squeeze. That's what they would have done. You're not testifying today. Have you spoken to the House Financial Services Committee? Have you spoken to anyone in Washington about these issues? Uh, no, I did not. Are you looking at reaching out to them? Well, eventually they will. The SEC will have to uh, uh, look into the the hole in the system. And uh, they will have to uh, stop it. And uh, I assume that they will ask for comments and we will send them a letter.